Well, hey, 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 this is Rose R.C. Creations. How you doing? I'm bringing to you today a video on making envelopes for different types of cards. What I've done here is I made a bunch of these cards because I like, I like stuff that's different and odd. And here's a card. And I printed this whole thing on my printer. I got it off uh, a CD-ROM. And um, here's a, this is a se separate little piece right here. And then let me open this up. And you see here? So there's, I just did this out of paper. Now this of course is cardstock, the, the base of the card. And then this is paper that I glued on top. And then, But I liked it because number one, it's little, my little mouse birthday card. I'm not totally finished with it yet because I still have to write, um, do a message on the outside and on the inside. But I want to hurry up and get some envelopes made for it because I had three other ones that are odd shapes that I want to make. So this is what I just want to show you some ways that you can make envelopes for stuff that is odd and you don't have to stick with the normal A2, A6 size cards, 5x7, 6x9, the, the standard stuff. And you can make it out of your 12x12 12 12 paper or any other paper. I also uh, do this out of rolls of wrapping paper um, because it, it doesn't have to be, you don't want it to use cardstock because it's too thick. You could use it, but it's a little too thick for an envelope. So you need more of paper white, paperweight size. And this is just some a 12 by 12 paper. I don't even have, no, I don't even have the name of it. It's probably something that I got in the little individual bins at Michael's uh, Hobby Lobby or Joanne's. But this is just 12 by 12 paper. But let me, if I want to just show you the other cards first. And I, I just like to match the uh, envelope with the card base. Just, just so it stays in the same family tree. So here's the first one I'm going to do. And then here is a 6x6, six six, but it's a tiered 6x6. Six six. And so we're going to make it thick. to So it's going to be thick enough to high, fill this whole filler. And I went ahead and just used, found this one. I'm just, you, you just use what's in your stash. Don't go out and buy paper. Just use what you have because I'm sure like a lot of us, we have a lot of paper. And the whole point of you get buying all this paper is to be able to use it. So this is a good way to use your 12 by 12 paper. And you use, oh, pretty much 90% of it's going to be used. So that goes with this one. This one was my sympathy card. And I am going to do this one that I just wanted to kind of match because it's kind of a woody theme. theme and this is kind of a woody theme in the background. But I didn't want to be too overpowering. And I thought I had some wood paper, but I don't. All I have is wood cardstock. Wood cardstock, not paper. So I'm not going to use that. So this is a close of what I had to match. And then this one is almost like that 6x6. Six six, but this is actually... Where's my little... Where's my note? Where's my paper? Let me see. Where did I put my little paper here? I just had my little... My measurements. Where did I put my measurements? <laughs> I misplaced it. Well, anyway, I wrote them all down. They're on the little paper. I'll find it in a minute. So here is one. I think this one is five and a half by five and a half. I believe is what the size was. And I went ahead and ended up picked this one just because it's nice and flowery and it's springy colors and all that. And it kind of matches it anyway. So that's going to be that one. So what we're going to start off with first. Let me get these out of the way. Oh. Here's my paper. I just wrote down on some scrap paper here. Whenever I card, uh, I cut anything out and I have a, a strip like this, I save these. And I have a little bin that I keep this right here by my desk. And I use this as scrap paper. So that way I don't waste my cardstock. Because this is a good size. And then if I need to for a die cut or for a stamp, I can always use this also for that. But I use it mostly for scrap paper. And let's see. So let me this out of the way get this one out of the way because I'm gonna start with this one first and I went ahead and, and I do what I've done is I have I was fortunate enough to get this uh, from crafters companion and it's called let me find out for a page of this this is called uh, the envelope sorry I can't read this upside down it's called the envo envo box creator Crafter's Companion. Here is the item information for someone who wants to look it up. I think 
they still sell it. You can buy this separately or you can buy it in a kit. I went ahead and bought it with a kit that had this whole uh, little um, thing that does, it's a, it's a container and you can, it's got a ruler, uh, all kinds of stuff that you can do. It's a multi-use item, but I know you can also buy this just separately. Okay, so check out their website. Okay, and then let's I'm trying to see if there's any other information you may need. Well, here's this. I don't know what this means, but here's the UPC code on this. I'm moving it kind of slow so the glare doesn't get on you there. And uh, oh, there's the um, there's our website on the bottom down there. So there's the website. I hope it stays in focus for you there. Okay, and I'm gonna be honest with you. This is a good. This is at least. I would say at least at least a 10 15 years old that I've had this so and this also came with a DVD but I've, I do this so often I'm already I don't I already know how to do this so what I do what you do is let me go to my grid this one is going to be uh, I, didn't, I didn't write down what what is what so let me get my ruler this particular card is about, oops, this one, let me get my glasses on, oh, I can see, yay, <laughs> okay, so this, this envelope is about a little bit less than eight, so this one is five and a half by eight, I bet you. So this one, yeah, five and a half by eight. So, and I only, I, this is only going to need to be a flat one. So you get to do, and it does give you all the instructions on how to do it and how you score it and cut it and the whole shebang. But then they have a flat envelope grid here. So you can do the flat envelope. And then here is the same thing. They do this in metric, and I don't know how to do that. I just do the English version. <clears throat> okay, so here's the English version. Uh, the standard inches size, flat envelope, size grid. Okay, and then we're going to do, for a flat envelope, I'm going to do the 5.5 by 8. So. We're going to go by uh, one is the length size and one is the width size and you can really measure it any way you want to it's totally up to you so five and a half by eight is this one here which is you cut the paper so you want your cardstock to be cut ten and three eighths by ten and three eighths and then you're going to score at the h and the m so i'm going to go ahead and do that put that together i'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this because pretty much everybody knows how to cut paper and if you want more details step by step by step by step I'll be happy to do that just put it in the comment section that you'd be interested in seeing a video on that and then I'll do that in more and more detail I th I'm almost positive I did one I already did a, a video on how to make your own envelopes and stuff but I didn't do any of the odd size stuff like this so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this down and then I'll bring you back when I come to the next phase when I'm going to put it on the grid. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I've cut this 10 and 3 eighths by 10 and 3 eighths. And then what the directions say is you're going to score at eight, the letter H and the letter M. So what you want to do is you want to get one of the corners. It doesn't make a bit of difference which one it is. And then here are the tiers. Here's the first level, the second, the third, and the fourth level. And then here is a corner guide, first, second, third, and also the same thing. So what you want to do is you're going to get one corner, and since we're doing a flat, we're going to line the flat up this corner with this corner, and we're going to line the flat up with this corner with this corner, and then I'm going to score the first time on the letter H. So, and don't forget, be careful, because this is paper, so don't really put a lot of pressure on it. You want to do it lightly. So here's my letter H. Excuse me, but I had to use my Sharpie because I couldn't read these um, letters. It's it's just it's embossed on there, but it's hard to read. So I had to I use my Sharpie so I could read them a lot better. So make sure you 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 score it, but don't do it really 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 hard, okay? 
And then what you want to do is you want to take the opposite corner and do the exact same thing. So we're going to put this here on the flush it against this bottom grid, flush it against the bottom of this grid, and then we're going to score at the letter H. And then my next letter is going to be the letter M. So we're going to do the same thing. Letter M. Oops. And I like this because you get to, you're using this big t paper, 12 by 12 cardstock, or you could even use bigger paper. We're going to repeat it again for the next corner. Letter M. Oops. Letter M. Typically, two or three times is really all that you need. So you can see those are there. There are the score lines. So you can see that, and you can see them on here. Okay, so this part we're done with. Let me get my scissors, because now what you want to do. Let me get my glasses so I can see better. Is now what, what you want to do is you want to remove, trim these little off edges on all four sides. So you just want to cut from the end to the end of the score. And do all four sides. Okay, and then we're going to fold it and then we're going to add adhesive this is a good time for you I per personally purchased envelope glue I just think it works better not only that is you're able to let me find my envelope glue here it is and I know they just still sell it online I'm trying to think of I had originally bought this a good 25 30 years ago at one of the craft stores like Michael Hobby Lobby's. I don't think it was at Joann's. It was at Michael Hobby Lobby's. Then for the longest time, for years and years, they never sold it. But I had bought two because I never saw it before and I hadn't seen it since. So I had run out of it. Well, I hadn't run out totally, but I was running awful close. But I like it because it's repositional envelope glue. So this is made strictly for envelopes. But what you do is you add it. It's got a sponge tip to it. In fact, let me show you. There's a little sponge tip, and yes, it's kind of gooky and stuff, but that's okay. It still works. And then what you want to do is you want to hold it upright. I store mine this way because I don't like the excess glue in here. So I store mine upright, but when I get ready to use it, then I store it upside down. And then you want to add your glue to the part that you want to lick. Then you put this aside and you let it air dry. And it's going to take about maybe 20, 25, 30 minutes, depending on how thick you got the glue on there, and maybe even only 10 minutes. It just depends on how thick you put the glue, but you don't need a whole lot. It doesn't have to be thick. And then what's nice about it is when you get ready to seal it, all you have to do is moisten it, just like you do the regular store-bought envelopes. You're going to moisten it, and then it's going to adhere to whatever you sealed it to, which is the other part of the cardstock. So I'm going to put this right here. I'm going to lay it upside down so the glue would come to the edge. Now what I want to do is I'm going to get my bone folder. And you want to fold it on the creases. And do yourself a huge favor when you're working with big pieces like this, this big piece here. I'm going to show you right here. Is you fold it. Don't fold it all the way down. Then you start in the very center. And then slowly the fold itself or the score line will meet for you because if you go too fast you're gonna you're gonna be off centered and it's gonna be off believe me I know <laughs> I've done that many times in trying to hurry up and rush see how see that it was getting ready to do that it was getting ready to be off bent because it wasn't it wasn't bending on the score line so there you go and then I'm just bending that with my fingers that's all I'm doing and same thing here. I'm going to start at the center. I want it to fold naturally on the score line. So now that's done. So there is your envelope. It's all done. But for reinforcement, just because I want a crisp look, like most of us like a crisp look on an envelope. And then just to show you, I'm not having to glue it all together yet. But look at that. It's going to fit right inside the envelope. 
and then just so you see it ta-da there you go it's all sealed and you're all ready to roll so now what I'm gonna do is this part I, I actually put the double-sided tape any one you want and you got to remember depending on what size envelope some of these you have a lot of space here because you've actually got this this much right in here that you can put the double-sided tape on so you could do this with I think this is the one half inch and then you got this one I think this is the one fourth of the actually my ruler's right here and this one is the which one is this one I don't know my numbers so on my ruler sizes so okay this one is a 1 8 inch size 1 8 inch and then this one is the 1 4th yeah I was right that's the 1 4th inch so I, per I personally like to use them both because I'm different project call for different things so I'm going to use my 1 4th on this bottom part here because there's I have enough room I can do that and it's going to be a little more secure and you can also do the double sided it doesn't have to, oh, and then always write down, kind of finger where you're going to start it with. So you don't want to go too far over with too much adhesive. But you definitely want it to start at the bottom. And get as close to the edge as possible without going over. Because you don't want, and then I can go a little bit further. And see how I'm just measuring so I know how far down without going too far that I can go. And then let me back this up just a tad because I don't want the glue to show when I seal this seal this okay so there we go see there we go they're fine so that one's good take off my release tape throw that part away and then that part sealed we're going to do the same thing with this side and I'm just going to eyeball the part where I know I can go and there's that one there's that one this is not that tear and tape and even if it was I don't have that kind of finger strength that I could do that so I'm good to go I just use scissors if you had the tear and tape double sided work use that you use whatever you have wet glue an ATG gun, uh, any kind of adhesive gun, whatever it is that you have. You just want to have a double-sided one. Okay, there's that. Now we're going to use the envelope glue. And I had some little cruddies in here. That is just dried up glue because it's been a while since I made a big batch of envelopes. And that's okay. I'm all right with that. See how it's starting to come out? Because all you're doing is you're squeezing it out. And then I'm just going to put a little thin layer. And then I'll bring this up to the camera so you can see that. But you'll be able to see it. And as in fact, here you see, you can see that angle. You can see where the glue is at. And now it's not totally all over the whole thing like this one here. It's just a little strip. So I'm going to go back. And then there we go see how it's got a lot more wider so I'm having more of a good seal the same goal with this one it's it was on here it was good but it wasn't wide enough I wanted it to be a little bit wider okay close my this is glue so remember keep your bottle closed and there it all is I've got glue but I noticed I hope you can see this in the camera on my angle this this one's a good good strip this one I'm missing right in here so I'm gonna go back you can kind of feel it as you're gliding because it's smooth when you're gliding it so you can kind of feel it anyway you can kind of see that and there we go we got a lot bigger better control so now this envelope is ready. I'm not going to seal it. 
Okay, but now you see the envelope and we're done. So now I'm going to do the same thing with the other ones, but I'll bring you back when we do the second layer so you can see the other depth. Okay, we'll be back.